In order to do the amalgam restoration for a class one, you're going to have to take your amalgam pellet to the amalgamator for 10 seconds and gather the amalgam in the well. You pick it up with your amalgam transporter and place a small amount in the tooth. And what you can see me doing right now is condensing that first small amount with a small condenser. You don't want to fill up your entire prep surface or prep volume, I should say. You just want to get most of the floor, maybe about half the height of your prep. We're going to do a second layer right now. And then we're going to use a larger condenser in order to ensure that the amalgam is pressed firmly against your margins and you have a nice seal. This in a clinical sense will allow your restoration to last longer, but in a preclinical sense, it will give you a much nicer restoration with less flash uh, to contour and carve. At this point, you can see that the amalgam has definitely filled or overfilled uh, my prep. And that's exactly what you need because you need more in order to carve it down to the shape that you require. So again, I put in some more and I pressed it down with my large condenser. I'm now using the wide side of the egg ball burnisher or the football burnisher. And what I'm using this for is to create some elementary anatomy. Where I need a concavity, I create a concavity. Where I need a convexity, I create that. Once you have this relatively flat and relatively accessible, we're going to go to the acorn burnisher. Uh, the acorn burnisher is probably the best instrument to make grooves. Uh, what it does is it lets you just carve individual grooves and you will have a lot of flash, which you can get rid of with cotton, as you saw there. So there's the acorn, make my fishtail, buckle and lingual extensions, and my pit, the mesial pit. So the acorn is used by keeping it perfectly vertical, starting in the centermost part of your prep and dragging it to each of your extensions in a relatively straight line, according to tooth anatomy. Once you use the acorn, as I said, use cotton, clear the surface, in order to refine, you can go in with a ball burnisher to smoothen the surface after you've done your initial bit of carving with the acorn. Um, this will cause you to lose some of the anatomy that you just created with the acorn. Some of the sharpness of those grooves will be lost because the ball burnisher will push things back into the groove you just created. But you want to do this in multiple steps in order to ensure that you have a smooth finish with sharp defined anatomy. Again, anytime you see flash, the easiest way to get rid of it would be to use cotton or to use a cleoid discoid carver, which I will show later on in this video. Um, I generally prefer cotton because it's honestly much simpler to use. Um, here I'm using a small ball burnisher to redefine some of that lost anatomy that I had with, a, with using a larger ball burnisher. Um, I decided that it was not enough anatomy for me, so I went back to my acorn and recarved the grooves. Remember, if you overfill your amalgam, you will have the ability to carve it multiple times. You won't run into a void. But if you underfill the amalgam to start with, you have a void before you can even get your first initial carving. This is the technique that some people prefer, which is using the cleoid discoid to go around the margins and remove excess or flash. It is very effective. And if you have the skills and if you're confident enough to use the cleoid discoid, you can even go into your restoration as I am doing very gently and lightly here to again, smoothen your restoration. What instructors are looking for in the preclinical setting is not the shiny sort of filling you can see on the adjacent tooth number 18. They want to see smooth finish, but it should be matte in color with defined anatomy. And the cleoid discoid lets you achieve that smooth surface finish while retaining your anatomy, unlike the ball burnisher or cotton. So at this point, my restoration is pretty much done, but again, I lost a little bit of anatomy due to cotton. So I'm going to take the football end, which is the sharper end of the egg ball uh, burnisher, and I'm going to carve my grooves one final time. As you can see, 
I'm going in curved motions as opposed to straight motions like I did with the acorn. And that's because this instrument is a little bit more forgiving. A final little bit of cotton to remove any excess flash. And there is a completed restoration. This is not an ideal restoration that would receive five out of five, but it is an acceptable restoration and you can all do better uh, if it permits. Thank you.